groups that attacked civilians, but also used nonviolent approaches to try yep. to achieve a Palestinian state. And meanwhile, the Israeli government began to establish Jewish settlements in what had been Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. There are now there are a lot of people who are upset, and they say, "How dare the Israelis, you know, put Jewish settlers into these areas? This isn't Jewish land." Well, if you're Israel and you won the war. Why isn't it Jewish land, right? But if you're Palestine or you're Arab and you think you've won the war, why isn't it Arab land? You might go, wait a minute, do you think they won the war? Yes, yes. Literally, I'm here in New York City and I used to have conversations five, 10 years ago all the time with a bunch of hot dog vendors. I'm not joking, hot dog vendors here in New York City, Manhattan. Many of them happen to be Egyptian. And also many, there are many Egyptians who do, used to do limo services. Now, most of them are Uber now, but there used to be a limo service, used to be a thing here in New York City. I would talk to them. And if you ask an Egyptian, who won the last Israeli Arab war? Every Egyptian goes, we did, of course. And we were gonna, we were gonna cross Israel, but you, the UN made us stop you know, fighting. Otherwise, we we're gonna win. Every Egyptian says that. There's not one Egyptian goes, nah, that we, we lost that war. There's not one Egyptian who says that. Ask an Israeli who won that war. We won. We were going to march on Cairo if it wasn't for the UN stopping us. There's not one Israeli who thinks they lost that war. So every Egyptian thinks they won the war and every Israeli thinks they won the war. How can you have a peace? The UN just said stop fighting. It didn't say what are the terms to stop fighting? What do you agree upon? What land is what? So the Egypt, Egyptians were waiting for to get the land back. Because you lost the war, you had to give the land back. You lost the war. That's what Egyptians were thinking. And of course, their government was telling that. Then that, of course, the government was saying that. Of course. And Israel's like, we're not giving the land back. We want it. We want it in the war. We're not giving the land back. Why would we give it back? You lost the war. Lose the land. Of course, they would think that. The Palestinians are thinking, we, we won the war. When did we get our land? Never. And no one says anything to them. So, of course, this becomes illegal. That's the problem. But if you sign the peace treaty and this is Israel and this is not, it is no longer illegal. There are now over 350,000 Jewish settlers in the West Bank and over 200,000 in East Jerusalem. And these settlements are illegal according to international law. But Israel counters by yep. saying that they aren't really illegal because Palestine isn't really a state. By the way, do you understand that this is literally solved, literally solved? with a real peace treaty. If we simply had not forced them to stop fighting, us stepping in from day one, as the British stepping in, deciding when Palestinians can have a country because we're British, to the UN stepping in, deciding when wars end and how they end, this is the biggest problem. If they had just let any of those wars finish in any way, we wouldn't have this problem. If we wanted to defend the, 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 the Israelis, then we should have marched in and helped them and then won the war and signed the peace and made this big thing Israel or not. We did exactly the worst thing. Stop fighting without a winner or a loser. The exact worst thing. 1980s, Palestinians launched the first intifada, which literally means shaking off. And this began yep. with like boycotts of Israeli products and services and refusing to pay Israeli taxes. But so now the, the Palestinians boycott, don't pay taxes. Why should they? They don't believe they're in Israel. Would you pay taxes to the Canadian government if you're not in Canada? Of course not. I don't want to pay taxes in America, but I'm just saying, that's the point. The point is I'm paying taxes to America. I'm in America. I'm American. They don't think they're Israeli. Why would they pay taxes? They never agreed to anything. Of course they wouldn't. So what does Israel do? As any state does, resort to violence. That's what states do. That's not an Israeli thing. That's a state thing. So they decided to resort to violence. Of course. So now we're fighting again. Of course. Where's the peace? But when the Israeli armed forces cracked down on protesters, violence they ensued. And the first intifada also saw the founding of Hamas, which launched the first suicide bombing against Israel yep. in 1993. Hamas gained support partly because of its militancy, but mostly because of its social welfare projects in Gaza. It built and staffed schools, mosques, and clinics. So what, what does that mean? Why wouldn't the Israelis go in and build schools, 
mosques, and clinics? Well, because the Palestinians, they aren't paying taxes, are they? The Palestinians are fighting us and trying to kill us, aren't they? So we're not going in. To hell with them. So a mosque realizes, oh, the government won't help, so the community does. Hmm, we haven't heard that before. So the community helps. So the community's helping you, and they're saying and telling you all day long, Israel's evil, you got to go kill them, they're terrible, we're not Israelis, we're Palestinians. You're hearing that all day long, and they're the ones helping you. They're building the clinics and the mosques and the schools. Who are you going to believe? And I'm saying if it's you, anybody, this is anybody, who are you going to believe? You're going to believe the people who are there helping you. Of course you would. Cool. The, the, the Israelis are like, well, you're not paying taxes. You're fighting us. You're bombing us. We're not helping you. In fact, we're going to fight back. And violence against violence. That always works, right? No, it always makes more violence. Always makes more violence. And what is the core of this? They never agreed to stop. They never agreed to the reason to stop fighting. They never agreed to an actual peace. They stopped fighting because we told them to stop fighting. So the most important legacy of the first intifada was the emergence of peace talks between Palestinians and That Israelis. did happen. This led to the Oslo Accords and- Now the Oslo Accords, this is now, this is the 90s, right? I think it's 90, is it 94? I think it's 94 when this happens, right? It's 94, I think, the Oslo Accords happen and there's finally peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Okay. The war ended in 73. This is 94. And they have the accords. But note what accords is. It's not a treaty. It's still just an accord. An accord, by the way, simply means agreement. They don't even call it a treaty. There's still no peace treaty. The peace process based on our old friend United Nations Security Council Resolution 242. But there Why are we paying attention to the UN at all? It has failed us in this case tremendously. There are a lot of issues to resolve. I mean, putting aside the question of like how to make two states that don't look like a jigsaw puzzle, there is the question. How do you make two states don't look like a jigsaw puzzle? Wasn't that the problem we had in the beginning? If we had fi fixed that problem in the beginning, we don't have the problem anymore of the Jewish settlement and the right for Palestinian refugees and their descendants to return to Palestine. What about that? Do they get to return to Palestine? Does Palestine exist? None of that has been explained. So of course you're angry if you're Palestinian. Of course you're still pushing out if you're, if you're, uh, if you're Israeli. Water rights. Water rights, which are a big deal in that part of the world, and so on. It's very complicated. So then came the Clinton talk. So it's time for the open letter. But first, let's see what's inside of the globe. Oh, look, it's a collection of philandering American presidents. An open well, letter to Bill Clinton. True. Hey, Bill, so your talks probably came closer than... The, the, the point I, I, I bring up here is we keep fighting over this. We could have fixed this. We didn't. It's far bigger. And this video, so it's coming, it's left, but I found this video in five minutes, less than that. You tell me a teacher couldn't find this? A kid couldn't find this. The information to give you a background is here. You could find it. And if you cared, you can dig deeper if you want to. No worries. You can dig as deep as you want to deep as you want to dig if you want to. You can go find out details, watch movies, all kind of stuff. It's here. Why can't our education system do that? Because it's focusing on stuff that doesn't matter. It's focusing on cultural war and not real war. Let me say it again. It's focusing on cultural wars and not real wars. That's our country right now. Everything is about the culture war. Nothing is about what affects real people. In this case, real people who live in Israel and, and Palestine or however you want to call the area who are really having trouble. So Larry, what's the answer? The most, the, the, the easy answer for America, just walk away. We are not seen at all as an honest broker. We're just not seen that way at all. We have broken our honest broker status years ago. Just walk away. That's the answer. The best thing America can be is if they want us to be it and if we agree as American, our policy do so, we can be the enforcers and the police if they come up with an actual peace plan because we have weapons and such. That's the best thing we could be. That's it. But I'm not saying we shouldn't be that, but that's the only thing we can be. We let other people step in and fix this.